I feel like we burned all the bad luck or bad recommendations maybe on last night's slate. We had, of course, the bad luck with the White Sox and Phillies getting postponed. So no uh, Lance Lynn there. And then Jacob DeGrom looks really good, which is great because Kevin Gosman lets up seven runs in one inning. So we got DeGrom to lean on, but then he leaves for precautionary reasons for a wrist injury. So everything that could have gone wrong did on last night's slate. Hopefully that means that's all out of the way. And we can just kind of look forward to Tuesday's slate, wash our mouths out and get ready for another one. And I think the good thing here is there are once again, pretty exciting plays, both at pitcher and for stacking, where I do like this slate, feel good about it, and I'm ready to bounce back. So let's dive on in and get you ready for Tuesday night's slate. Welcome on into the solo shop. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and numberfire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for Number Fire, here to break down Tuesday's 12-game main slate with locks set for 7.05 p.m. Eastern for today. Weather notes here, just one spot where there could be some rain. That is in Kansas City for the Royals and the Rangers. It should be clear by first pitch, but just check back on the timing of that later on. The colder games for today with temperatures under 60 degrees. There are five of them. First one is in New York for the Yankees and Angels. Still do like offense there despite that. We got Boston for the Red Sox and Twins. San Diego for the Padres and Braves. Oakland for the Cubs and A's. And then Los Angeles for the Dodgers and Mets. Those games are colder. Should downgrade offense there, but not too much because not a ton of actually Warm games on today's slate. I think the warmest one is at 76 degrees. That's the lone one higher than 70. So don't downgrade too much. And we will still be talking about at least one of those games in the stacking section. We'll dig into the stacks and pitchers in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you are subscribed to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. We, of course, are up a podcast, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, you name it. You can find us there while you're there. If you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating uh, MLB DFS podcast every weekday. UFC coming up this week via Austin Swaim, all right here in this same place. The NBA playoffs are here, and you can turn crossovers into cash with FanDuel. Just visit FanDuel right now and place a $5 bet. You'll get $150 in bonus bets win or lose. There's no better place to bet all the playoff action than America's number one sports book. Just go to FanDuel and sign up to get $150 in bonus bets when you place your first five bucks. FanDuel official sports betting partner of the NBA. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. Bonus issued is non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See full terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG. In Massachusetts, hope is here. GamblingHelplineMA.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support. In New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text OPEN-Y. In Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-789. 7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat in indiana 1-800-9 with it in wyoming and kansas 1-800-522-4700 or in kansas ksgamblinghealth.com louisiana is 1-877-770-STOP in maryland mdgamblinghealth.org and in west virginia 1-800-GAMBLER.NET Pitching preview for this Tuesday main slate. Marcus Stroman comes in with the highest salary on FanDuel. He checks in at eleven thousand dollars, followed by Spencer Strider at ten eight. We got Clayton Kershaw at ten thousand. Sonny Gray against the Red Sox at ninety eight. Logan Gilbert is ninety seven. Jordan Montgomery at ninety five. Nathan Eovaldi at ninety one. Followed by Brad Keller facing Eovaldi. Tyler McGill and Jose Urquidy as the other guys at eight thousand dollars or higher. You heard a lot of high upside names in that discussion listing the pitchers for today. One of those high upside guys is Spencer Strider, and Strider is in a tough matchup. He faces the Padres on the road, but we still got a couple days before Fernando Tatis is officially back in the lineup, and I think that keeps the door open for Strider to be the top option for today. It is still a tough spot despite no Tatis yet. Uh, the Padres active roster has a 112 WRC plus against righties with a 21% strikeout rate. And they do draw a lot of walks. And the walks are a concern because Strider is not efficient with his pitches. But as we discussed before, 
my strikeout model does account for that. It knows he's inefficient and it still has him projected for 8.2 strikeouts tonight. That is 0.7 more than anybody else on this slate. The sample on Strider being a dominant guy keeps on expanding. He has made 23 starts since moving to the rotation. And in that time, he has a 2.47 skill interactive ERA, which is easily the tops on this slate. He has a 39% strikeout rate. Also best mark on this slate. He doesn't let up a ton of hard contact either. Even when Strider does let up hard contact, he can erase earned runs with strikeouts. He has nine in all three starts so far this year. If you go back to last year, Strider has nine plus strikeouts in seven consecutive starts. So my 8.2 projected strikeouts actually decrease from what he's been doing recently. I think we should make Strider the top option for tonight. If he does come with some drawbacks for sure. So Spencer Strider will be my number one pitcher for today. Now, although I love Strider and want to make him number one, Logan Gilbert is firmly in that Strider tier and worth consideration as well in DFS. Very much in shouting distance, even if he's not quite on Strider's level. Gilbert is at home facing the Brewers. That's a better situation than Strider's. The Brewers are pretty good against righties, but they will strike out. 24% strikeout rate on the current active roster against righties since the start of last year. Gilbert has had plenty of strikeouts himself this year as well. He added a splitter in the offseason, and it's not a high usage pitch for him. 11% usage rate per baseball savant, but that pitch in those 11% has been nasty. The ex-WOBA against Gilbert's splitter so far per baseball savant, 041, 041. That's disgusting. He also now has four different pitches that get at least a 22% whiff rate. Gilbert did have that last year too, but his numbers this year are insane. The hard contact is down. The strikeouts are up. The whiffs are up. He's getting more ground balls. So I'm not sure if he'll be able to sustain this because it's pretty sick what he's doing. But if he comes close to it, he will be considered a top shelf ace in the very near future. There is also some room for growth. He's been great so far, but those two starts came against a low strikeout Cleveland offense. So I'm pretty pumped to see what he can do in a plus spot here. I think that Gilbert is in Strider's tier, and I would not have th thought that entering this year. Gilbert projected for 7.5 strikeouts. He's the only guy other than Strider above seven. So Logan Gilbert, to me, a worthy number two. And honestly, if you said you want to put Logan Gilbert above Strider, I can't push back on that because he is a great option and a guy I want to be high on for today. So for me at the top, it's Strider 1, Gilbert 2, but they're kind of a 1A, 1B. Feel really good about both those guys and want to have plenty of them in my lineups. There's not a ton to like in the value section for today. It's basically just Chris Sale and Brad Keller for me. Keller is in a repeat matchup with the Rangers, but Sale still working on a limited pitch count. That's going to push me towards Keller here, but Sale, at least somewhat interesting, and we'll talk about him in things to watch. Keller, as mentioned, facing the Rangers. It is a repeat matchup, but he was very good in the first one on the road in Texas. He went six and two-thirds innings, let up one run on three hits, seven strikeouts, and the strikeouts aren't a huge surprise because the Rangers, their current active roster, 24% strikeout rate versus righties. But Keller is also very different this year than what he was last year. He's added a curveball, and the curveball has a 37% whiff rate per baseball savant. He's throwing that pitch 25% of the time, which is a big usage number for him, and it looks great so far. He can throw that pitch to both righties and to lefties. He has a 23% strike rate so far, which is not huge, but again, he's a value play. I'm not sure if he'll keep that pace up, but the curve at least gives me hope that he is a different guy who can get us a decent number of strikeouts. Now, Keller is still letting up hard contact, but a lot of that is on the ground at least. His salary here is $8,800. I'd rather find a way to get up to Gilbert at 97 because that salary is lower than it should be, I think. But Keller is the top value option. A guy I think is, is viable. Wouldn't be shocked if I don't get there because I like uh, Strider and Gilbert enough, but at least willing to consider Brad Keller. And again, we'll talk about Chris Sale in things to watch. Before then, though, got to break down Coors Field. It's not always a must to talk about Coors Field for stacking, uh, but I think it is pretty close to a must for tonight on both sides. 
I prefer the Rockies, so I'll start with them. And then we'll go to the Pirates after that. The Rockies are facing Vince Velasquez, who has a 5.40 ERA, which means he has avoided calamity thus far with only one really bad start. But the underlying numbers still say that we can kind of expect that to keep on happening uh, as far as the potential for calamitous starts. In the three starts for Velasquez, he has a 16% strikeout rate and a 12% walk rate. He is getting some whiffs, but he's not converting them into strikeouts just yet, letting up a 36% hard hit rate with a 55% fly ball rate. Now, that 36% hard hit rate is better than what Velasquez has led up for most of his career, and it's just not good enough to overcome the issues elsewhere. Last week, we did see Velasquez pitch pretty, pitch pretty well. He held uh, the Cardinals to uh, no runs across six innings, but in that game, he let up three barrels. And if you let up three barrel balls, you're not getting out of there with no r- runs allowed very often. He kind of got lucky. Now he's at Coors Field. He'll have to get lucky again. And I think the Rockies are a solid option for tonight as a result of all of this. And again, salary is not on the Rockies, not super, super high. One of the guys who comes with a very moderate salary is Ryan McMahon. I think this is a good time to buy into McMahon. He is striking out way too much, and that's always a concern because it means he's probably not seeing the ball super well. But when he does make contact, he is striking it. He has a 21% barrel rate this year. He is hitting the crap out of the ball. And he's also willing to run a bit. Can get some stolen bases. So the strikeouts are rough, but McMahon has big upside when he makes contact and puts the ball in play. And I think that eventually we'll see a psycho level game out of McMahon in the very near future. So Ryan McMahon, a building block for me at 32 and a guy who will be a fixture focal point very much. So in my Rocky stack for today, other side of that game is the pirates. I like them plenty as well. They're facing Jose Urania, who has made just three starts so far this year, but it looks very similar to what we saw from him last year. The expected ERA against Urania is 9.49. He has more walks and strikeouts, a 48% hard hit rate, very few whiffs. So I don't know how long he can last in the rotation with that being the case. Obviously, the Pirates aren't a huge threat in their current state, but we saw last night that they can have big games. And you could say the same thing about the last team that Urania faced, which is the Washington Nationals, not a super potent team. But in that game, two home runs, six runs, four earned, and two and two-thirds innings. One strikeout compared to three walks. So the Pirates are not great, but it may not matter. I think we have to just kind of auto-stack against Urania, especially at home, until we get a reason not to, and that does include tonight, with the Pirates being the benefactors here of this situation. We can be very okay with righties in the situation. Last year, Urania led up a 34% fly ball rate to righties. Uh, was 25% to lefties. So lefties actually had better results against him, but righties good upside based on that fly ball rate, which is a great thing for Andrew McCutcheon, who has looked awesome so far this year. He has three stolen bases. He had eight all of last year. He has a 389 expected Woba. Key Brian Hayes puts the ball in play a ton. He's got good speed, good fit for Coors, putting up some really nice totals recently. And if Connor Joe plays, it is a revenge game. Just tossing that out there as well. Um, and all those guys are fighting against Arania, not just the lefties. I think the righties deserve some shine too. Hayes, I think, is going to be pretty fun for $2,900 tonight. So not a huge guy for me outside of Coors Field, but put him at Coors Field with all that speed, he could do some damage. So keep Ryan Hayes, a uh, fun guy for today. I don't mind either side of tonight's game between the Yankees and the Angels. I'm guessing the Yankees will be the more popular stack because, you know, it's the Yankees, higher implied total, stuff like that. But that could make the Angels a good contrarian option. And I'm going to put them third on my list for stacking for tournament specifically as a result of this. They're facing Clark Schmidt, who had plenty of hype earlier in his career as a prospect, and he was pretty solid in relief last year. He had a 3.51 expected ERA across 57 and two-thirds innings, but being a starter is a different beast than being a reliever. He's really struggling so far with hard contact, a 60% hard hit rate, a 13.5% barrel rate, 47% fly ball rate, and that's led to an expected ERA of 8.99, which is actually higher than his actual ERA at 8.44. 
The Angels are not the team I'd want to face if I were struggling right now with hard contact because the Angels have a 42% fly ball rate against righties and a 197 ISO. Fly ball rate is highest in the slate, ISO second highest behind the Yankees also in this game. Putting that in this park, they should have upside, even if it is a bit cooler than you'd really like. So I think there's enough here to ride at the Angels, at least for tournaments, uh, because they've got upside, good spots, Weather stinks, but the rest of the stuff does align to make them a really fun option. This is also a pretty good excuse to use uh, Zach Neto as a value play here. $2,200 just got called up. May hit leadoff. He had the past couple of nights. He had three home runs and three steals in double A before his promotion. Now, it is a big jump to go from double A to the majors, but he has speed and he's hitting leadoff and he's $2,200. So he might not need to be perfect yet to be a good play for DFS. I think the speed specifically is a big selling point because doesn't necessarily need power yet to be a viable option for DFS. So Zach Neto, $2,200, really good value play, whether it's within Angel Stacks or as a one-off in order to get more upside elsewhere. The other side of that game as we transition now to things to watch is the Yankees against Jose Suarez. And I like Suarez plenty, but he's not super restrictive with his fly balls and the Yankees Torch lefties, a 126 WRC plus with a 198 ISO. And Suarez's results this year have not been good. So I don't think he's bad. Um, I just think his situation is. I don't mind the Yankees at all. I think they're right up there with the Angels. If you're stacking for cash games, I think the Yankees are the better option. But I think with the Angels being less popular and having a lot of upside, I think they're my preferred tournament play for tonight, but both very fun. I'm unsure what to think of the Baltimore Orioles. They're facing Josiah Gray, who lets up a lot of fly balls. Not as many as he did last year, though, before he added a sinker. And he's had some good starts this year. The hard hit rate down a bit as well. So the Orioles are a tough team to face when you're a pitcher lets up a lot of fly balls. So I don't mind them. I think they're they're fun, have upside. But they're not as big of a no-brainer as they would have been against Josiah Gray before his past couple of starts. So I do like the Orioles for sure. We'll get there. But Gray is making some tweaks that may be making stacking against him a little bit less enticing. I did want to touch briefly on Chris Sale. Letting up a lot of hard contact right now uh, looks pretty bad overall. But the strikeouts are there. He has a 30% strikeout rate. His pitch count went up to 81 last time out. That number is slowly creeping up. I have Sale projected for 6.8 strikeouts, which is fourth behind Strider, Gilbert, and Blake Snell. So I'm not going to get there, but I did give it consideration. At least with Chris Sale, I think we're getting closer to it. I just need to see the hard contact come down a bit eventually. Maybe it won't, uh, but I do think that Sale is at least worth monitoring for now. Let's finish up here with some dinger calls for today. Going back to that Yankees and Angels game, actually for bull picks, uh, but... Looking at Clark Schmidt, he's really struggled with lefties. Even when he was in the bullpen last year, didn't face a ton of lefties. But when he did, they did do pretty well against him. So Shohei Otani at Yankee Stadium, short porch. I know, again, weather not ideal, but I don't get to pick Otani here super often. But we'll go with him for tonight. So Shohei Otani, the boring home run call for today. The fun one, only one career home run so far for Anthony Volpe, but gets to face a lefty here. Yankees have not, I don't think, faced a ton of lefties. Yet so far, should bat pretty high in the order, uh, puts the ball in the air. So we'll go with Anthony Volpe. Home run calls for today, Shohei Otani and Anthony Volpe, both out there at Yankee Stadium. That is all the time that we have here for today on the solo shot. Again, hopefully we got all the bad luck out of our way last night and can have some fun with what appears to be a pretty solid slate for today. A uh, quick reminder, no heat check uh, on the PGA side of things for today. I don't think they're running DFS contests for the Zurich. So no PGA heat check back with you once again next week to break down the next PGA tour event, but make sure you're subscribed to get the solo shot heat check for USC later on this week as well, all in the same place. If you have any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J I M S A N N E S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. I want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your MLB DFS lineups. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow to break down Wednesday's slate. This has been the solo shot right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.